A force may be defined as that which causes or tends to cause a change in the state of rest or the uniform motion of a body. If a body is moved from rest, a force must have been applied. If a moving body changes its velocity, then too a force must have been applied. As velocity is a vector quantity, if either the magnitude or direction changes, then this represents a change in velocity. Consequently, a body moving with constant speed that changes direction must have been acted on by a force. Mass and weight are not the same. The mass of a body is a measure of how much matter it contains. A body with a large mass will require a large force to change its motion. The mass of a body is constant and independent of its location, provided no matter is added to or removed from the body. Mass is a scalar quantity. The SI unit of mass is the kilogram. The weight of a body is the force that the Earth's gravity exerts on the body. The weight of a body depends on its location. A body close to the surface of the Earth will have more weight than one at a distance. As weight is a force, it is a vector quantity. The SI unit of weight is the Newton. One Newton is the force required to give a mass of one kilogram an acceleration of one meter per second per second. The mass in kilograms and the weight in Newtons of a body are related by the equation W equals mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. The value of g varies at different places, resulting in the variation of the weight of a body. Newton's first law of motion states that a body will continue in its state of rest or uniform motion unless a resultant external force acts on it. As a consequence, if a body is accelerating, there must be a resultant external force acting on it. If a body is not accelerating, the forces acting on it must be in equilibrium. The resultant external force must be zero. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a moving body is proportional to the resultant external force acting on the body and takes place in the direction of the force. When an external force acts on a body of constant mass, the acceleration produced is directly proportional to the force. The equation representing Newton's second law of motion is force equals mass times acceleration. When more than one force acts on a body, the force F is the resultant of the combined forces acting. The force and the acceleration it produces act in the same direction. A constant force applied to a body of constant mass produces a constant acceleration. Newton's third law of motion states that if a body A exerts a force on a body B, then B exerts an equal and opposite force on A. This is sometimes stated as action and reaction are equal and opposite. Consider a stationary car on a bridge. The car exerts a force on the surface of the bridge. The bridge exerts an equal and opposite force on the car. The two forces indicated must be equal and opposite, or the car would accelerate in the direction of any resultant force. Newton's laws apply to any motion, however it may be caused. They apply whether the force producing the motion or change in motion is constant or variable. If a force F varies in a known way, it is possible to represent the motion by a differential equation.
Newton also formulated a law relating the forces of attraction between any two bodies in the universe. This is known as the law of universal gravitation. If two bodies of mass m1 and m2 are situated so that the center of mass of m1 is r meters from the center of mass of m2, then the force of attraction F between them is given by the formula shown here. Newton named the constant G, the universal gravitational constant. The gravitational force exerted by the Earth on a body of mass m on the Earth's surface can be found using the law of universal gravitation. The law of universal gravitation is an example of the inverse square law, where the force between two bodies is proportional to the square of the inverse of the distance between their centers. If the distance is doubled, the force reduces by a factor of four. Whenever a resultant force acts on a body, work is done by the force. If a body accelerates under the action of a constant force, the quantity of work done by the force equals the force multiplied by the distance moved in the direction of the force. As force is measured in newtons and distance is measured in meters, work done is measured in newton meters or joules. One joule is the work done when a force of one newton moves its point of application one meter in the direction of the force. In the example below, the force, F, acts at an angle of theta degrees to the direction of motion of the body. If the force moves the object a horizontal distance D, then the work done by the force is F times D times the cosine of the angle theta. Note that work is only done by a force if the force moves a body. If a force is applied to a body and the body remains at rest, no work is done by the force. Energy is the ability to do work. It is a scalar quantity. The SI unit of energy is the joule, the same as the unit for work. A body or system that possesses energy can do work. In doing so, the body or system will lose some of its energy. A body or system that has work done on it can have its energy increased. In this case, the work done on the body is equal to the energy gained by the body. Kinetic energy is energy possessed by a body due to its motion. An expression for the kinetic energy of a moving body may be obtained by calculating how much work is done on the body to bring it to rest. The diagram below shows a body of mass m kilograms moving with a constant velocity v meters per second. A constant force, f newtons, acts on the body such that it is brought to rest in a distance s meters. It is possible to calculate the acceleration of the body. The negative sign indicates that the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the velocity of the body. The kinetic energy of the body must equal the work done by the force in bringing the body to rest and can be calculated to be equal to half mv squared. The potential energy of a body is the energy associated with the position of the body. In a gravitational field, the potential energy of the body is a property of its height. 
the potential energy possessed by a body of mass m kilograms at a height of h meters above the surface of the Earth is equal to the work which must be done on the body to raise it to that height. A force equal in size to the weight of the body and acting in the opposite direction must be exerted on it to raise it through the vertical displacement. The work done by the force against gravity is the force multiplied by the displacement. If a body with potential energy falls back to the ground, a quantity of energy equal to mgh would be lost by the body. The zero position for the calculation of potential energy can be any chosen level. Bodies above this level would be considered to have positive potential energy. Bodies below this level would be considered to have negative potential energy. The mechanical energy of a body or system of bodies is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies possessed by the body or system. If a body of mass m is projected vertically upwards from point A with velocity u, it has to do work against the gravitational force. At a point B, the velocity has reduced to a new value. We have seen that the loss of kinetic energy from A to B is equal to the work done by the body against the downward force acting on it. Also, the potential energy gained by the body at B is equal to mgh. The loss of kinetic energy equals the gain of potential energy. The principle of conservation of mechanical energy can be stated as follows. The total quantity of mechanical energy which the bodies in an isolated system possess is constant. Mechanical energy is conserved if no external force other than gravity acts on the system and no mechanical energy is converted into other forms. A particle attached to a stretched elastic string possesses energy in the form of elastic potential energy. There must be a force, P, acting on the particle to maintain the string in its stretched position. This force does work in bringing the particle from the rest position of the string to the stretched position. If the force is removed, the particle begins to move due to the elastic potential energy. The elastic potential energy of a stretched string may be found by calculating the work done in stretching the string. In this case, the force applied to stretch a string is not constant, but varies with the tension in the string. The tension is directly proportional to the extension of the string. The work done in stretching the string is equal to the average force multiplied by the extension.